We're coming to you from the Radford Studio Center lot in Studio City, right over the hill from Hollywood. This is the place where dreams are made, legends are born. Hello and welcome to The Lot. I'm Suzanne Marquez. Jennifer Lawrence's role as Katniss Everdeen made her a star. But what happened before she came along and what made Donald Sutherland's character just so evil? The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes takes fans back before Katniss Everdeen was ever born. What are the Hunger Games for? The film focuses on the villainous President Snow as a young man. Tom Blythe plays a young Donald Sutherland. Rachel Zegler plays Lucy Gray Baird, a female tribute from District 12 who forms a connection with him. In just a few minutes, we'll be joined by one of their co-stars, Dakota Shapiro, who plays the ex-boyfriend of Zegler's character. And another guest is joining us from Eli Roth's latest slasher movie, Thanksgiving. It's a holiday horror film about a murderous pilgrim on the attack in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The longer this goes, the more twisted it gets. The weapon he's using is straight off a Thanksgiving table. I don't want to spend my life looking over my shoulder. We need to stop him. A masked killer is getting revenge and hunting down greedy people from a Black Friday brawl the year before. Patrick Dempsey is sheriff and Nell Verlack is the teen hero trying to catch the murderer. She is joining us, dishing up some tea from the set. Alexander Payne's latest movie, The Holdovers, is gaining Oscar buzz for its star, Paul Giamatti. I sat down with Paul to talk about this new film and the movie that brought this award-winning duo together. So, Paul, mm. I am one of those sideways super fans uh, who have adored you since the beginning. Thank you. And I've read so many interviews with Alexander Payne, and mm -hmm. he said working with you was the most enjoyable time mm -hmm. he's had as a director. What, uh, yeah. I'm amazed that he's saying that, and it's, I'm, I'm unbelievably flattered. I'm <laughs> like, wow, you've worked with some amazing people, really? But I feel the same way about him. I mean, there's no question in my mind that he's the best director I've ever worked. When yeah. you look at his movies, Nebraska, The Descendants, Election, every one Sideways. Of them. Yeah, nails every one of them. They're amazing. He's great. And what was this experience like with him? I mean, even better than the last time. History is not simply the study of the past. It is an explanation of the present. See, when you say it that way, and throw in some pornography, it's a lot easier to understand. Yeah. I think now we just felt so comfortable with each other. We really didn't have to say anything to each other. You know, I just kind of knew what he would want or knew what he didn't want. And we were always kind of unspoken, sort of like working it out together. We're on the same page all the time, so it was easy. I think this is my first interview with you, so mm. I have to ask you, have people made the Merlot joke in front of your face a million times where you're so sick of it? No, I'm not sick of it, <laughs> but, it's, but it's definitely <laughs> happened a lot. I mean, people have sent me bottles of Merlot, and I don't drink wine. So people will send me, and I'm like, okay. And, you know, I mean, I, in a restaurant, somebody will send me a all glass bad. of Merlot. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sick of it. It's nice, but it, but I have gotten it a lot. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yes. it's pretty wild that your character changed the wine industry. I know. It's freaky. Aye, aye, Captain, you got it. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot! Okay, okay, <laughs> relax, Miles. Jesus, no Merlot. Did you bring your Xanax? But apparently it's finally recovering Merlot, it is. I'm, I'm told, which is good. Yes. Because <laughs> I didn't, I don't know, I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about Merlot. I didn't, you know. So. Well, something about your character in the sideways mm -hmm. role, I think that's what made people just fall in love with you. They, Thank you. What do you think it was about that character? I think he's just super vulnerable. <laughs> Yeah. I think he's a very, he's got all the kind, he's got every kind of anxiety and vulnerability yeah. that a person could possibly have. I think he, this guy in this movie is actually less so. I, know. I think he's actually less, I mean, yeah. he's vulnerable. He's, rigid. he's got, le well, he's like, he's a little tougher, this guy, than that guy. That guy's just got every possible anxiety going on. So I think everybody's going to be able to identify with some aspect of that character. Well, thank you, Paul Giamatti. Thank you. An honor to interview you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Now to a film for the whole family to groove to at the theaters. Trolls Band Together reunites in sync as the Bro Zone. Joining Branch and Poppy for this new animated adventure. Baby Branch! I'm John Dory. Branch's brother. What? Ow! <laughs> Former brother. The Trolls crew is back and bigger than ever. A brother is a friend who can never leave you. It's the strongest bond in the world. I would kill to have a sibling to sing with. Check 
Trolls Band Together is the latest installment in the hit franchise. The film's director says he's still amazed seeing evolving animation technology bring his characters to life. Change. It's incredible. I mean, it truly is still like I've been doing this for 30 years and it's still mind blowing to see it, like see it come to life on the screen you know, with all of the new technology and the new ideas from the crew. So it really is. It just blows my mind. We'll be sitting in the theater and seeing these things that were just sketches come to life. It's a miracle that it all comes together. Lead character Branch reunites with his former boy bandmates in the family tale. Star Justin Timberlake recruited his old NSYNC pals to take part in the soundtrack. It was fully his idea when he heard the song and he let me know he thought it would be cool to bring the band back together for that song. And, you know, I lost my mind. Like, there was like dynamite going off in my brain. And then, like, <laughs> and then I finally made it to like the humble point and like, <laughs> like honored and grateful. Yeah. Um, to be able to see that happen. You're all I ever wanted. You believe this is really happening? You're all I ever needed. The longer this goes, the more twisted it gets. The weapon he's using is straight off a Thanksgiving table. I don't want to spend my life looking over my shoulder. We need to stop him. Oh yes, a holiday horror film. Nell Verlax stars in this new slasher movie, Thanksgiving. As the tagline goes, there will be no leftovers. Nell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank that just brings me, me so much joy. Yes. So what was it like working on this movie? It was crazy and scary and <laughs> awful, but it was great. Yes, yeah. let's talk about your character and everything she goes through. Gosh, she's kind of the, the focal point of this whole, whole crazy journey, so she, is in high school and, and has this terrible tragedy happen in this town and she's somewhat responsible for it and her and her group of friends start being terrorized. So these awful things start to happen to her and she has to deal with it in whichever way she can, so. Yeah, so an intense role, but I'll ask you a lighthearted question okay. because it is the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick Dempsey is your co-star. Yes. He just got awarded uh, Sexiest Man Alive. Nobody gets why. <laughs> I heard his family was roasting him over it. They should. <laughs> I, I did too. I, I said, I posted something congratulating him and I said, um, congrats to Patrick Dempsey. Uh, don't let it go to your very big head of hair. <laughs> and I was like, he, he just needs to stay humble. With exactly. That. But the title helps us. So. <laughs> It's fabulous. It's I love great. it. He's a silver fox. I haven't met him, so I, I can gush oh, over him. You, it's quite hard to act with him, actually, because his eyes are so blue, and it's just, yeah, I'll stop there. Yeah, I get it. It's like, okay, don't let him know how Hope cute he, he is. See this. <laughs> exactly. We'll, we'll hide it from him. Yeah. So let's talk about another guy in the movie. Eli Roth, the yes. director, is yes. notorious for these over-the-top movies. Yes. I, I've always loved them, and they've kind of grossed me out. <laughs> they're wild, they're wicked, and hilarious. That's the yeah. best part about Thanksgiving to me is you're laughing throughout. I know you are. I'm so glad that people, we've now started to see it with audiences, and hearing people laugh is just like a huge relief. I was like, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to, it has all that tongue-in-cheek humor, and, and Eli does such a good job with that. So yeah, it, it kind of has it all. When, when someone says like, oh, I can't go, I, I don't like seeing scary movies, or it's not my thing, I'm like, you should give it a chance, because that is not all that it has. So. And what is he like as a director? I'm curious. Uh, he's so focused and, and he's so passionate, but he's also very, I keep saying this, like he's a five-year-old boy in a grown man's body. <laughs> so he's so excited to do everything. And it's kind of in, infectious in a way when you have someone that loves it that much and they're on set and they trust their actors. So you just hear him screaming like, more blood, more blood, <laughs> keep going. I love that. Yeah. And so this is notorious for being a trailer as part of Grindhouse, which is Quentin Tarantino's movie with yes. Robert Rodriguez. Yes. And you just had a really special screening. We did, yeah. Quentin uh, let us, I, gosh, Sir Tarantino, I apologize. <laughs> We're not on a first name basis. But he, um, he opened the Vista Theater here in Los Angeles and he let us premiere Thanksgiving there. So. It was a surreal, very full circle moment for Eli and for us. We were just so excited to do it, so it was great. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah.
Okay, since we are talking about very dark movies in a really fun time, let's take a left turn and talk about your holiday traditions. Okay. So for Christmas, <laughs> what do you do? Christmas, we, I live in New York, so mm -hmm. my family uh, gets a giant tree and then I make them, we're not very traditional, so I'm usually the, I'm the youngest child, so I usually like poke everyone to try and do something and uh, we each have a dog, so let's just say it's, it's like a farm. <laughs> and, I love that though. And we just have dogs running around and we make tons of food and, and it's great. Well, you know what? Dogs, I feel like, are just like children. They lighten the mood. They do. Is this like their big get to together, like a reunion? It, it is of sorts. My, you know how like when you have kids, which I don't have except for my dog, but your grandparents, like your, yes. your parents become the grandparents, they take care of everything. And so they treat the dog better than you probably. They do, and they <laughs> always love to go to grandma's. So it's like all the dogs come together and they like being at grandma and grandpa's and I just like give my child off to them. And oh. like take care of them. I love that, right? Yeah. yeah. And is it cliche to go to Macy's for Christmas or not? Because I love doing that. <laughs> I don't know if I do that. I, I, I mean, for Thanksgiving though in New York, there's a huge parade obviously. Yes. So. I, I'll watch that on TV and whatnot. That's my Macy's Association. Well, I love that. Thanksgiving parades. So. That's mine too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so now much. Now it's been a treat having you, <laughs> and I can't wait to see you in more movies. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. I hope of you course. like the movie. Oh, you know it. Happy <laughs> holidays too. Yeah. Now, when we come back, we're sharing an exclusive clip from Songbirds and Snakes and chatting with Dakota Shapiro from the movie. Stay with us. Lucy Ray Baird. Sing your way out of this one, Lucy Gray. What is that dress? She's some sort of clown? Lucy Gray, I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm sorry. You just saw an exclusive clip from The Hunger Games, Songbirds and Snakes, and Dakota Shapiro joins us now on set. You were just in that scene, Dakota. First of all, congrats on this movie. Thanks so much. And tell me all about your character. Um, so Billy Tope, he kind of gets Lucy Gray involved with The Hunger Games mm -hmm. unintentionally. He kind of has a dalliance with uh, the mayor's daughter and, and she kind of pulls some strings. So he's kind of responsible for the predicament that she's in. Um, so he's, he's pretty naughty. <laughs> so kind of a bad guy, but we wouldn't have a really juicy story without your yeah, character. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's on the edge. He's on the edge. He's trying his best, maybe. <laughs> well, I love it. So a man of mystique and intrigue. Totally. <laughs> so tell me where you guys filmed, because it's such a beautiful film, filmed at different locations. Where were you guys at? So we were in Duisburg in Germany. Um, and uh, when I got there, the cast had already been filming for about six months. But um, yeah, they're they really welcoming. They they, you know, made us feel like it was their first day on the job too. It was great, and Germany's so fun, so beautiful. Um, yeah, it was a really great time. And this is quite a big role for you. This is the biggest role you've had yet in your career. What does it feel like to be on the big screen in a role like this? Oh, it's intimidating, but it's really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's kind of a dream come true. My my sister loves Hunger Games. I, I read the books when I was growing up, so it's kind of amazing to be a part of something that. Uh, you know, was, was such a big part of my life. And let's talk about your origins because I had read you're an Aussie, but I don't hear the accent. Yeah, I know, I've, I've been over here for too long. So yeah, I'm sorry, every everybody out there, I am Aussie, I promise. <laughs> well, one thing I love about the Aussies is you guys ha have such great dialects. Can you do different impressions? Yeah, I think I can do some different impressions. Okay, well, what would be your Aussie impression? <sighs> Just bogan, like, oh, fair dinkum, mate. Yeah, <laughs> go have a schooner down at the pub. I love it. I yeah. love it. I, I, can't, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so tell me what it was like working with this cast. Uh, it was great. I mean, it's such a talented group of people and some real legends in there as well. So um, I was just so excited to be, like, a part of it. Um, yeah, they, I, I, there were so many 
um, Lucy Gray, um, Coriolanus, like they did such a good job with those characters, um, Rachel and Tom, and uh, and I, I felt like I learned a lot from watching them both, and uh, I felt like I was just in in such good company. They did such a great job, and uh, it really felt like such a such an opportunity to to kind of work with them. Yes, Rachel was so incredible yeah, singing in great. West Side Story. I have I have to ask, was she singing on the set at all? Yeah, really? <laughs> there was a lot of singing on set going on. <laughs> yeah. A lot of songbirds and snakes. Right? Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of songs behind the scenes, and it was great. I mean, they they they've got amazing voices, so <laughs> they're really good. That's wonderful. And uh, what did you most enjoy about filming, or were there any challenges when you were out there? It sounds like it was pretty cold. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was. It was cold, but. Uh, I think the biggest challenge was my first day of filming is, is this scene where I, I'm, I'm interrupting Lucy Gray in a, in a whole tavern of people. She's performing. So it was my first day on the set. I'm pretty nervous and, uh, and I have to go and yell over a, a group of people. So it's kind of a, a pretty intense introduction into the set. But, uh, but after that, then it felt like the rest of it was smooth sailing. Cause it was like, all right, I got this out of the way. I've yelled over everybody. I've made a huge mess of myself and, uh, and, and now it's just easy. So the perfect icebreaker. Exactly. Okay, one question before you go. We're in the holidays. What are your holiday traditions considering you're an Aussie, but your mom's American, right? Yeah, yeah, She's uh, she lives in New Mexico. So I'm gonna go there for, for, uh, th for Thanksgiving and then go, go home to Australia for Christmas. And um, I don't know, our, our traditions, we just hang out and have a good time together. <laughs> but, uh, but I like it. <laughs> and what do you guys eat for Thanksgiving? Um, we'll have, it changes every year, but uh, sometimes turkey, sometimes we'll have like shepherd's pie and some gravy and you know, the leftovers. And then what's, I have to say, what is Christmas like in Australia? Because it kind of boggles my mind, but it's not too different from California. It's hot. Yeah, it's <laughs> peak summer there. So it's like, I, I always, I never knew why like snow was associated with Christmas because it was always the hottest, hottest part of the year whenever I was growing up. So. <laughs> Well, I love it. And this is a movie for the entire holiday season. Absolutely. Lots of families are going to eat this up just like the rest of the Hunger Games. And what a welcome to Hollywood, Dakota. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. <laughs> and thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you have to watch the Hunger Games, Songbirds and Snakes, if you haven't already. And after directing a slew of big budget movies, director Taika Waititi returns to his quirky indie roots with an underdog story. Next Goal Wins is based on the true tale of American Samoa's famously awful national soccer team in theaters now. You're fired. Good news is you got two options. Option one, that's where you're currently at. Or American Samoa. Are you serious? Next Goal Wins stars Michael Fassbender as a soccer coach exiled to the worst national team on the planet. We haven't scored one goal in the history of our country trying to have a soccer team. Goal! I scored again, humiliation. Mark my words, things are going to change. Things do not start out well. Come on, guys! We've worked too long and hard for this. You've only been here a few days. It's a personal film for director Taika Waititi. Just great for me to be able to put brown faces on screens mm -hmm. and you know, have uh, you know, showcase parts of our cultures and Pacific Island, Polynesia. Safe to say you have zero talent or understanding of the game. So they're not right about this guy. What? He is white. Taika's a Pacific Islander, and he understands the sensitivities of um, telling Pacific stories. That's it, Jaya leadership. Aimana plays Jaya, the first transgender player in a World Cup qualifying match. The accuracy to the culture, um, to the Fafafine identity, and to um, trans realities, trans experiences. Now we're making some progress. When we come back, hitting the road with Swizz Beats, who makes it a family affair as they race around the world. Hip hop legend and avid car collector Swizz Beats is hitting the road with his son Nas for a new travel show. Drive with Swizz Beats just dropped on Hulu and it's about fast cars, culture and community. I spoke to them while they were on the road. Drifting, flying around twists and turns in Tokyo at the Gunside Toge course. It's a popular type of driving called Toge racing. 
I've never felt anything like this nah. before. Like, there's no feeling that's close to this feeling. It's just one of many places hip hop legend and car collector Swizz Beats takes his son Nas on a trip around the world, visiting different places with one thing in common car culture. When when you love cars and you love you know anything mechanical, um, I want to know how it all started. Um, well, my love for cars started in the Bronx. Um, seeing cars go by, I couldn't afford. That's my car. This is my car. And then I eventually got a Nissan Z three hundred twin turbo for about six thousand. And then my journey in the car world like never never turned back from that point. So I've, we've all heard of Seinfeld's legendary collection. Can we talk about Swiss Beats collection? Yeah, my collection is not a Seinfeld collection. It used to be, um, but now it's more curated. Now it's more, you know, I don't want just a bunch of things just to say, oh, I have all these things. I want things that really speak to me as a collector now, and um, that's how I'm doing my collection right now. And how much do you share your vehicles with your kids? Uh, zero. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> should more, but, nah. you know, I think... Um, the cars, like, it's not like they're shareable cars like that, <laughs> like. <laughs> All right, man, you're free to go whenever you're ready. But make no mistake, Swiss Beats wanted to make sure this show was a family affair to help other families connect when they watch. We was looking for a co-host and I was like, you know, there was a lot of big names and then I felt that, you know, doing it with my son was an even better um, addition to the show because then it's a family show and then you get to see a father and son dynamic that you normally don't see from our culture. Um, we know we wanted to give people a global aspect as well, which is why we added Saudi Arabia and Japan in there as well. Um, but then we also wanted to keep it close to it that if you're in Houston, if you're in New York, LA, or Atlanta, you can discover things that's happening right in your backyard as well. looks so fun. Meanwhile, new episodes of Lost Cities Revealed with Albert Lin are on Disney+. Plus. He travels to the ends of the earth using technology to strip back the layers of time and reveal ancient lost cities. He became an amputee in 2016 after a crash and talked about getting back at it with a renewed sense of purpose. My name is Albert Lin. And I look at the world in a unique way. I use 21st century technology to look back into the past. I think what's what's been profound for me was that the um, you know the, the the greatest waves of discovery have happened in a time where I was just coming out of losing my leg, right? So then all of a sudden I'm like, I got to get back out there. It was the it was the idea of wonder. It was the idea that there's a discovery about to be made. The lighter just came in, boom, and it like brought me back into the field where I was pushing, pushing, pushing to try to go deeper and deeper and deeper for this sense of discovery. And in turn, all of a sudden, my body was like, oh, this is how you do this. You know, this is how you walk. Uh -huh. And it's also been a benefit to me in the expeditions because sometimes it's more dangerous not to have something like this, right? Like. People send me in the, the teams. I'm always the one that lead first because the snakes can't get me on, you know, on this prosthetic leg. So it's like, yeah. okay, the snakes are going to have a rude awakening. Or when I was in Israel, I was on a boulder and I was climbing on the boulder and, I, and this huge boulder that came loose as we're going for this, what we thought was a lookout tower above this cliff. I jumped out of the way and just in time, it missed my body, but crushed my prosthetic foot and sent it into splinters, you know? And so I've lost the same leg twice, <laughs> you know, but, but the truth is for me, it, it's a, you know, the, the, the human spirit of uh, wonder can overcome anything. That's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Suzanne Marquez. See you again next week on The Lot.